what is the most profitable things to sell at a farmer's market? So in this podcast, which we will definitely upload onto our YouTube channel for all of our YouTube subscribers, this podcast, we're going to dive into that specific question and the five most profitable foods and why they're the most profitable foods. And if you're looking to create a food business and you don't have a lot of money to invest in a big commercial kitchen or to build out some big facility, starting at home is the best thing to do. Even if it's a side hustle, if you're looking to create some additional revenue on the side, home-based food businesses right now are one of the hottest and most profitable ways to start any business. Reason being is that you already have everything you need and under cottage food laws, you don't have to build out some amazing commercial kitchen. You don't have to build out a whole bunch of, of another facility. You can actually start with what you have. So I had this question actually on our other channel, Marketing Food Online 2, which we'll have a link down below in uh, in the descriptions for that other channel. But in our other channel, they a gentleman that actually asked us about this because him and his wife were looking to start a farmer's market vendor's booth, but they wanted to know what was the most profitable thing. They wanted to see what it had the biggest margin. So we delved into and dug into some statistics and some data. We went online and we actually found out some of the most inexpensive products to either buy and then repackage and just sell or products that you can actually make at home. So welcome to Marketing Food Online. It's Damian Roberti, founder and CEO of Marketing Food Online. I'm a food entrepreneur, and I love to give you guys, the food entrepreneurs, tips and tricks on how to start food businesses, no matter what you wanna sell. If you have a question about your food business, let me know in the comments, because I like to create videos um, about uh, you guys' questions and create some fantastic information to help you guys out. Now, really quick too, we have our brand new uh, a memberships, memberships platform set up here on YouTube. If you look down below this video, there's a little button that says join. There's three different tiers and based upon which tier that you get, members only, there's actually a membership section within our channel too, but members only will get additional perks and other benefits because you've signed up for that. Also, all of those, of those monies, those funds and those fees that we charge for those different tiers help us continue to create uh, video content, other resources, and then put out even more content that we have set up and in line to do. So it does cost quite a bit of money to edit and create these videos. It's definitely something that um, a lot of times people don't realize it, but a lot of this all of our videos are free, but it does cost us to actually upload and do them. So any additional memberships that you guys uh, helping us out, it's a twofold because we can help you out even more and get your questions answered and create content around what you guys really need. So definitely check out our membership section. So let's get into this. So what is the most profitable thing to sell in the farmer's market? Number five, trail mixes. And particularly right now, the beginning of spring in 2022, trail mixes, because a lot of people are out and doing hiking, they're doing a lot of outdoor events, finally, uh, compared to what we were doing in 2019. Uh, but uh, things are opening up, a lot of people are doing a lot of activities. Trail mixes are great for multiple reasons. They can be loaded with proteins, they can give you energy, plus they're easy to put in a bag. If you've got a couple of kids and you're going to a soccer tournament or you're going to a trail and doing some hiking or bike riding, trail mixes are hugely, hugely popular. The marketplace will never be filled enough with trail mixes. Now, the average per pound bag cost to either make or buy it pre-baked and break it down. And by the way, I'll even help you out even further. If you check out the link down below, it'll take you to our website where I've got a list of all of the things I'm about to tell you about, these five items. You can actually buy almost all of them except for one. All of them pre-buy them in big bulk and break them down and put your own label on it and sell it, okay? Now, of course, there's a lot of labeling things and stuff, but I'll get into that in another video. But the trail mixes, the average cost per pound is $3.99. We actually have a trail mix on Amazon that we charge $16.99, $17.99 a pound. And there's about a $14 profit margin on that individual pound. $3.99 it costs to, to make the average trail mix. Of course, you have some on the higher end that are uh, that have uh, mixed nuts and cashews and maybe even macadamia nuts with dried fruits. Those are a little more expensive, and you have some on the lower end. But the average medium price for one pound, $3.99, and you can retail that at farmer's markets for $15.99. Now, in a minute, I'm sure you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Damien, some of these prices for the retail sound crazy. Nobody's going to pay that much. Yes, they will, and I'll tell you exactly why they will. Number four, nuts. Average price per pound, now of course, everybody knows nuts vary based on pistachios, if it's cashews, if it's a mixed nut, but you can actually buy these in bulk again, and I'll have the listing down below to show you the website you can do this on. You can actually get them in 40, 50 pound boxes, scoop them out, put them in a one pound bag, label them, seal them, and sell them. The average cost for one pound of nuts is around $6.99 a pound cost. Some of them, like I, like I said before, some are going to be higher, some will be lower, but $6.99. And the average retail price for a pound is $14.99 to $15.99. That's roughly almost about $10 a pound profit, 
okay? And number three, one of the most profitable things, and you'd have to make these. This was the one I mentioned in the beginning that I said, well, there's one item that you can't necessarily buy pre-made, but baked goods. Now, when it comes to baked goods, I'm talking about muffins, I'm talking about cookies, I'm talking about uh, scones, I'm talking about uh, biscottis, um, even energy bars. These are all also allowed under cottage food laws. Cottage food laws allow you to create certain types of non-potentially hazardous food products. Every single state has some type of statue um, on the books about cottage food laws and what you can make and what you can't make. Now, baked goods are something that are always popular, super inexpensive to make, easy to package too. By the way, these five particular items, I also put them on our list because of how easy it is to package them and to merchandise them and sell them. Some products, if you're talking about salsas, you got a pH level. If you're talking about like ketchups or condiments or pickles, a lot of cottage food laws don't allow you to do pickling because of the pH and because if it's not pickled properly. These are very simple, easy to package, easy to make, and easy to sell. That's the reason why I put them on our top five list. So baked goods is one of them. And, in, and I'm telling you, anything you can come up with, if you can bake a chocolate chip cookie, then you can come up with 100 variations. We actually have over 47 or 48 different cookies on our website uh, that we sell online because we just have a huge variety like blueberry white chocolate, cranberry almond, all kinds of stuff that you can put into cookies. Make them unique. Make it stick out. Make it stand out. Package it very simple, very easy, inexpensively too. The average cost, and I'm going to throw this out there. Of course, baked goods are different. If you're making a bundt cake, it's different than obviously a muffin and cookies. But the average set of two dozen cookies on average costs either $2.85 or less. There is a, there's a two dozen cookie that we make that costs us just under $2, two dozen. I charge $26.99 on Amazon for them, okay? Now, Damien, can, what can I charge for those baked goods at a farmer's market though? Anywhere from $19 to $22. And if you don't believe me, in a moment, I'm gonna explain why these, these amounts actually exist and why they, those price points are there. Number two on our list of top five uh, most profitable items to sell at farmer's market is popcorn, but not just popcorn. You need to have a variety of popcorn seasonings and allow your customer to customize the flavor of the popcorn. If you bake up just regular traditional popcorn, you scoop it out nice and fresh and hot. Of course, you're going to have to invest a little bit in a popcorn maker, but they're not very expensive. I've seen them even on Amazon or a restaurant for around $300 to $400, and that's not a lot to invest in a, in a food business. But popcorn in general, when you buy it in bulk too, and by the way, I'll even have a list of websites too that you can check out that sell popcorn in bulk. You can get a pound of kernels for around a dollar, which is an unheard of when you pop it, it creates a ton of popcorn. But popcorn kernels are very cheap. Create it, but you allow your customer to customize the flavor. That's what's gonna set your, your popcorn apart. Everybody on the planet that goes to a farmer's market, a festival, a local event, loves popcorn. But the great thing is kids eat popcorn, adults eat popcorn, senior citizens eat popcorns, teenagers love it. Everybody loves popcorn, okay? That's why it's number two on our list because it's cheap to make, it's easy to package, by the way. You simply get yourself one of those disposable popcorn bags, open it up, scoop it out, let the customer put the seasoning on it, and that customizes it, and it gives them an incentive to take your pot, eat your popcorn instead of just regular old salt and peanut butter, or some peanut butter, salt and butter, and just the plain traditional flavors. Spruce it up, give it something unique. And the website you're going to check out on my website uh, that I've got that'll link you over to show you, they have over 40 to 50 different popcorn seasonings. You can package them, put them in a container, let them shake it on, and they'll come back for more and more, okay? Now, the average cost of a serving of popcorn when it's popped, you got a bag, and you've got seasonings, et cetera, is around $1.10. And believe it or not, the bag that you're gonna sell them, you can get anywhere from five to $6 for a jumbo bag of popcorn. That includes the seasoning that they can customize it with. All right, and in a moment, like I said, I'll explain why these, these amounts exist, and they're gonna, people will pay it. Number one, most profitable product and you can buy this pre-made and again i have a website link for this as well all of these items that i'm telling you except for the baked goods i have a link for you to go and you can check out for yourself and you can see how much these cost spices yes i actually went to a local farmer's market here actually i believe it was last year near the end of last year i think it was in the fall um, there was a guy who had him and his son started a spice they had a spice tent but they served it where as a spice blend mix. It was a dipping mix that you actually put it in sour cream. They had like four, 
four or five dozen different flavors. They were all over the place with these huge spices. The guy was charging $11 a bag, believe it or not. My retail is around seven to 10. The average four ounce to eight ounces of spices, of course they vary too. All of these have different ranges, but the average between four to eight ounces cost only $2. These guys were selling this four ounce bag with a little clip on the top for 11 bucks and they had people lined up. The way that they sold it though, is that they had their tent with their sour cream already made with their seasoning, blended up, and they were letting people dip like little chips and crackers and try it. And they were buying two and three packages at a time. You're talking about $20, $30 worth uh, per transaction of spice mixes, these mint blends for this, this dip. It was, it was astonishing. I was blown away. So spices is the number one. Now, let me wrap this video up really quick and explain to you why these prices are. You're thinking, oh, popcorn, nobody's going to pay 5 or $6 a bag. Yes, they will. Here's why. People love, number one, people love to support local food businesses, especially today after what we went through in 2019. A lot of people, uh, if you're in a small family food business, people love to support small family food businesses. But when they go to local events, they're out for the day. They're out to have a good time. They're willing to spend money. I can tell you the one that I went to here was actually a wine festival. I took my, wine, my wife and we had a couple of our friends go with us and my son came to hang out with us. But the wine festival... People were doing wine tasting. They were dropping $30, $40 just for sampling of wine. And then they were buying stuff that people had set up in tents and foods and snacks. People will spend at farmer's markets. And they will support you, the local food business, the local family business that just got up and running and they're selling and just trying to make ends meet and get, get, get some people out there to try your product. They will spend this kind of money because they love to support your business. Okay, And the other thing is, is that when you create these gourmet batches of food products, locally made from your home, micro batches, as they're called, micro batch, small batch food products, people love the uniqueness of it, the packaging, the story behind it. If your family is selling a product, one of the biggest selling incentives when you're starting out from home and you're doing the farmer's market, you're doing the festivals, is your story. Make sure people know the story. If someone comes up to your tent, and you start to, and they try something and say, hey, let me tell you how I started this business. They love stories. People love stories. And if you let them know that, they're willing to part with $10, $12 for a bag of spices. They're willing to part with five or six bucks for a gourmet bag of, of popcorn that has some type of bacon cheddar seasoning on it. That's just out of the ordinary, okay? All of these things lend themselves to your customers paying more, and you will make more money. And they're willing to do it. I've seen it at, at far festivals and farmers markets here locally. I always see people just lined up. Uh, we even spend them ourselves. This one guy had that spice, but eleven dollars for four ounces of spices. It costs around two bucks. So if you sell a hundred bags, even 200, 300 bags of spices in a weekend at an event, you're talking about several thousand dollars. So if you're looking for a side hustle, you want to start a food business, but you're not obviously going to go open a restaurant tomorrow. Maybe you're not going to buy a hundred thousand dollar food truck. And maybe you're not going to open up a commercial uh, facility that's going to cost you 200 grand just to process food. You want to start small, do it at home. There's so many different foods that you're allowed to make. Take advantage of it. So with that being said, what are the most profitable food items to sell at farmer's markets? Those are five. And if you have questions about those fives, let us know down below. And of course, remember, check out our uh, memberships program and hit that join button. Join button and actually we'll take you over to a video and explain more about what we offer through the memberships. I'll see you guys on our next video.